Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Bragaton. Let's loot and level up. Combat shotgun. His Lordship, Donald von Valencius, Rogue Trader by the Grace of the God Emperor and the Sacred Lords of Terra. Rogue Trader, Bearer of the Warren of Trade, Stellar Inheritor, and Guardian of Humanity comes. Let's go ahead and level up. Alright, so we get an ability and a common talent. Our defensive stance. The Vanguard gains percent parry until their next turn. Whenever the Vanguard parries an enemy's attack, they immediately make an attack of opportunity with a minus 20 penalty to weapon skill against that enemy. Wall of Rockcrete. The Vanguard and all their allies in a 3 cell radius around them gain temporary wounds. All affected allies gain minus 50% less damage from the next attack. The effect lasts until the start of the Vanguard's next turn. Bulwark. Until the start of their next turn, the Vanguard gains damage deflection against ranged attacks equal to the number of stacks of a yielding beacon on the Vanguard. Additionally, the Vanguard becomes immune to push and force movement effects until their next turn. Provocation. The Vanguard forces an enemy in their melee range to immediately attack the Vanguard. All of the Vanguard's allies who are wielding melee weapons and adjacent to the enemy make an attack of opportunity against that enemy. The enemy suffers Fellowship bonus more damage from these attacks of opportunity and has a minus percent penalty to parry and dodge. Force Distraction The Vanguard chooses an ally. All enemies in a 3 cell radius around this ally must make a willpower resistance test with a negative penalty. On a failed test, the Vanguard becomes their priority target. Regardless of the willpower resistance test results, the chosen ally does not provoke attack of opportunity from these enemies, and shoot enemies in melee range and move as if not within range of attacks of opportunity. Follow my lead. To the start of their next turn, the Vanguard gains a percent damage and percent armor penetration against enemies in a 2 cell radius around the Vanguard. Additionally, when the ability is cast, all allies in a 2 cell radius around the Vanguard gain the following ability until the start of the Vanguard's next turn. The following costs 0 AP, but 2 MP. The character can move to any cell adjacent to the Vanguard without provoking attack of opportunity. I have Provocation, since it scales with Fellowship, and that is my primary attribute. And I might do swift movements. I find that my main character is often lagging behind, especially Abelard and we had Heinrichs in the party. Heinrichs. Or the Emperor could be good as well. Also, many of these other generic talents could be good. But I think I'll go with Nimble, or not Nimble, um, Swift Movements. Grants plus two movement points. Alright, Pascal gets an ability. Killzone Stratagem. The Grand Strategist chooses one of the combat tactics areas. For one round, all enemies in that area are forced to reroll successful dodge and parry tests against all attacks. Any enemies that suffer damage and are left with less than so many wounds immediately die. Overwhelming Stratagem The Grand Strategist chooses one of the combat tactics areas. For one round, all attacks by allies in that area inflict the overwhelmed effect on any enemy that fails a willpower resistance test for one round. And overwhelmed, the creature suffers uh, minus ballistic skill, minus 25% rate of fire, and minus weapon skill. Additionally, melee creatures have their MP reduced by minus 3, and ranged creatures try to get behind cover. A creature counts as a melee creature if it has at least one melee weapon, 
and this additional effect does not work on some stronger enemies. Stronghold Stratagem The Grand Strategist chooses one of the combat tactics areas. For one round, allies in that area gain percent armor, cannot be overpenetrated, gain immunity to the prone effect, and gain deflection against area attacks. Additionally, they do not suffer injuries for receiving damage. Split Stratagem The Grand Strategist chooses one of the combat tactics areas. For one round, all allies within the range of so many cells gain the ability to move to that area. This movement does not provoke attacks of opportunity and does not spend MP. Combat Locus Stratagem The Grand Strategist chooses one of the combat tactics areas. For one round, the targeted area's bonuses are doubled. All other tactical areas are discharged and cannot be used this turn, but can be designated again next round. Trench Line Stratagem The Grand Strategist chooses one of the combat tactics areas. For one round, all allies in that area gain percent cover efficiency and reroll all failed characteristic tests. Additionally, cover in the area does not suffer any damage. See, so it's all enemies in that area. I don't like that. Now like the combat locust stratagem. A uh, stronghold stratagem would work on the front line one pretty well. Well, I think kill zone and stronghold both are intended to be used on the front line. Let's go with the combat locust stratagem. So the targeted area's bonuses are doubled. And all the tactical areas of discharge you cannot be used this turn. Uh, see, I don't like that one either. It gets rid of the other ones. Um, yeah, let's do kill zone stratagem. So the grand strategist chooses one of the combat tactics areas. For one round, all enemies in that area are forced to reroll successful dodge and parry tests against all attacks. Any enemies that suffer damage and are left with less than so many wounds immediately die. Is that what I want, though? Because I also wouldn't mind having... Ah, let's go with Killzone. It's fine. None of those really stand out to me. Alright, Ablar gets an ability and a common talent. So I'm going to give him Defensive Stance. The Vanguard gains percent parry until their next turn. Whenever the Vanguard parries an enemy's attack, they immediately make an attack of opportunity with a minus 20 penalty to weapon skill against that enemy. And I think we'll give him swift movements as well. Our Argenta gets an ability. We have Devastating Attack. The Arch Militant's next attack, if it hit, will cause all the targets to make a Toughness Resistance test with a minus penalty. If failed, the target will suffer a negative effect based on the attack's damage type. Impact damage knocks the target prone for one round. A piercing and rending damage inflict bleeding and slowed on the target until the end of combat. Energy and all other damage inflicted blinded on the target until the end of combat. Power swords and power axes count as both energy and rending, while power hammers count as both energy and impact. Attacks that combine several types of damage will benefit from each additional effect. Well, that's neat. Reckless Rush. The Arch Militant immediately gains MP. If the Arch Militant has stacks of versatility, those stacks are doubled until the end of the turn. But the Arch Militant loses all stacks that were added at the end of the turn. Wildfire. The Arch Militant's next attack will cost 0 AP, will not count toward the attack limit this turn, but will grant a stack of versatility even if the attack type is the same as the last attack. The cost of this ability is reduced by minus one for every four stacks of versatility. Cautious Approach The Arch Militant gains the Cautious Approach effect until the end of combat, or until this ability is used again. 
or until using Confident Approach. Instead of the usual bonuses from Versatility, Arch Militant gains plus 5% dodge and parry for every stack. If the Arch Militant already has 4 or more stacks of versatility, the Arch Militant removes all slowed, blinded, bleeding, burning, and toxin effects from themselves and becomes immune to these effects, as well as the stun and prone, for as long as the Arch Militant keeps the cautious approach effect active. Then Confident Approach. The Arch Militant gains the Confident Approach effect until the end of combat, or until this ability is used again, or until using Cautious Approach. Instead of the usual bonuses from Versatility, the Arch Militant gains plus 5% dodge reduction and parry reduction, and ignores 5% of enemy cover for every stack. All of the Arch Militant's attacks score critical hits, but the Arch Militant's critical damage for those attacks is modified by a percentage. If the Arch Militant already has 4 or more stacks of Versatility, the Arch Militant stacks always deal maximum damage as long as the Arch Militant keeps the Confident Approach effect active. And Kick. The Arch Militant makes a melee attack with a kick, dealing damage instead of weapon damage. Uh, this attack does not count toward the attack limit per turn, it counts as a single melee attack for the purposes of versatility. This attack cannot be parried and will push the target two cells away. Might do devastating attack and blind a group of enemies. Light them on fire and blind them at the same time. Seems pretty good. Hi, right, Master Tactician on Cassia. She gets a new ability. I still have to read down through finish the job because everything else is her navigator abilities. Alright, so Inspire. The target gains plus one damage and plus one additional damage for every 10 stacks of tactical advantage the Master Tactician has, but the Master Tactician loses half of their stacks of tactical advantage rounded up. This effect stacks and lasts until the end of combat. The target uses Heroic Act before the beginning of the Master Tactician's next turn. They regain plus 25 momentum. Lynchpin. The target ally or the Master Tactician gains plus one resolve for every five stacks of tactical advantage the Master Tactician has, but the Master Tactician loses half of their stacks of tactical advantage rounded up. And this effect stacks and lasts until the end of combat. Until the beginning of the Master Tactician's next turn, the Master Tactician gains stacks of tactical advantage equal to a percentage of all momentum the target gains instead of the usual 20%. Strong point. The target gains plus two temporary wounds and plus one additional temporary wound for every two stacks of tactical advantage. They lose half their stacks. Same stuff. Until the beginning of the Master Tactician's next turn, whenever the target loses temporary wounds from damage, the target gains momentum equal to the number of temporary wounds lost. Assign Objective. The Master Tactician marks an enemy. If that enemy is killed by one of the Master Tactician's allies before the beginning of the Master Tactician's next turn, that ally gains momentum and plus 5 to all characteristics until the end of combat. I like that one as well. Uh, Fervor. The Master Tactician suffers direct damage equal to 20% of their maximum wounds. Gains Master Tactician's Resolve stacks of Tactical Advantage and resets the cooldown of Lynchpin, Inspire, and Strongpoint. Until the end of the Master Tactician's turn, these abilities can only target the Master Tactician themselves. This works on her because she has that one talent that regenerates so many wounds every turn. So you can take that damage and then regenerate it. Uh, finish the job. It can only be used on enemies with the unfinished business effect. This effect is applied to enemies which were attacked by the Master Tactician's allies, but not by the Master Tactician, and have less than 50% of their maximum wounds remaining. The Master Tactician immediately attacks a target with a single shot or strike. This attack does not count toward the attacks per turn limit, Dealing half the weapon's maximum damage and additional plus ballistic skill bonus damage. But she doesn't have a ballistic weapon. I like Glimpse of Fate as well. Show the Path also seems pretty good, especially when we had both Heinrichs and Abelard in the party.
gonna go with strong point since I am leaning into her providing temporary uh, wounds to everybody. And it also proc uh, armor of contempt, which increases their armor. So she's uh, kind of a pseudo healer and buffer at the same time. That's why we didn't select her uh, next archetype yet. Um, we already have a grand strategist. With Pascal. Maybe Assassin? None of these feel very thematic for her. At least on surface level. Might do Assassin based on the description, because she is a Diviner. Assassins are masters at identifying the slightest vulnerabilities of priority target and dispatching them by any means necessary. So, being able to divine an enemy's weak points. Our core focus, high damage, dodge and dodge reduction, threat elimination, hit and run. She gets an ability- oh wait, what does she have here? Seek the opening. The Assassin sees a single opening for each enemy on one of the enemy's sides. So opening, whenever the assassin hits an opening, excluding over penetration, they deal an additional 10% of target's max wounds damage. After an attack, the opening is moved to the opposite side of the enemy. Openings of each enemy that were not hit by the assassin during the assassin's turn are moved to a random side of that enemy at the start of the assassin's next turn. So she has... I wonder how that works with Chain Lightning. Because Chain Lightning isn't over penetration. So can she proc multiple openings with Chain Lightning? That'd be really cool. Alright, so down through Fainting Attack. So Death Whisper. The Assassin makes an attack that does not count toward the limit of attacks per turn and does not block the Assassin's movement, but deals only 25% of base damage. If the attack is successful, the target suffers the Hemorrhage effect. Hemorrhage, at the beginning of each of the target's turns, they will suffer... Rending damage that ignores armor and deflection. And lethality, a specific assassin parameter that is equal to dodge or dodge reduction, whichever is higher. Elusive Shadow. One round, the assassin becomes the lowest priority target for enemy attacks and gains the elusive effect. Elusive, the assassin can move through enemies. The assassin gains plus agility, percent dodge, and plus... Perception percent dodge reduction. Uh, the assassin's attacks deal plus 10% additional damage. All half cover provides the assassin 50% cover efficiency. Elusive fades when the assassin attacks. Poise to strike. The assassin makes an enemy suffer percent armor and deflection until the end of the assassin's turn. If there's only one enemy adjacent to them, the assassin also gains percent dodge until the assassin's next turn. If there are no enemies adjacent to the assassin, they gain percent dodge reduction until their next turn. Dance Macabre. The assassin dashes in a straight line for up to so many cells, suffering minus assassin's weapon skill bonus less damage from attacks of opportunity, and gaining percent dodge against the enemies they dash through until the next assassin's turn. That's worded oddly. It says next assassin's turn, so if you have multiple assassins and one goes right after her, does it end? It doesn't say until the assassin's next turn. It says until the next assassin's turn. Uh, usually it's worded the other way, so that's why it's making me question it. If the assassin hasn't dashed through any enemies, at the end of their turn they gain percent cover efficiency to their cover until the assassin moves. It doesn't stack with itself. After the first use, the assassin can use this ability again for free. Killing Edge. The assassin attacks and grants plus 40% dodge to the target for this attack. This attack hits, it deals an additional rounded down damage. This attack hits if this attack hits an opening, its additional damage is increased by lethality percent. And fainting attack. The assassin's next single target attack will have a minus 50% armor penetration penalty with a minimum of 0% armor penetration and plus 10 lethality. If it's a melee attack, its target rotates 180 degrees. 
The enemy's dodge and parry against the assassin's attack is equal to 0% until the start of this enemy's turn. If it is a ranged attack, the target is forced to move to the closest cell in a 3 cell range with no adjacent cover facing toward the assassin. This movement provokes attacks of opportunity. I like Elusive Shadow. This, the bonus damage from the third effect is what I'm leaning towards because she does a lot of damage with her Chain Lightning. Not sure if that's optimal or not, but that's what we're going to go with. Alright, where to next? Let us not dawdle. Leaflet. We need no rules or leaders. We're not an organization. We're a force of nature. ANV. If you say so. Opticon 22. Keep your wits about you. Just dead bodies laying around. Seems a little odd. Enforcer Light Carapace. I'll check that out. So, dodge goes up by 20%. Damage reduction goes down by 10%. Well, 20 is bigger than 10, so let's try that out. Dodge goes down by 23. Damage reduction goes down by 10. Yeah, it's not worth swapping out. What is that? Sin skin. Oh, I should have done the heavy armor proficiency on uh, Avalard. I know that bird. The local Adeptus Mechanicus uses it to get around. The boats are easy to tell apart from the, all the pirates, smugglers, and other scum. Hey, some binary. The tall hunch tech priest stares at you unblinkingly. A breathing mask conceals his gaunt features. The skin on his hands is of a sickly gray hue, while his augments show signs of combat damage that are plated in black chromium, giving him a general air of lugubriousness. I don't think I said that right. I don't know if I've ever seen that word before. Lugubriousness. Initiating Identification Procedure. This unit is defined as a Logis Opticon 22 and is a fully authorized representative structural part of the Cognizant's fleet and the priesthood of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Access has been granted to the following options, information exchange, strengthening of diplomatic links, trade deals, donations. Initiating official greeting procedure for esteemed high value visitors. Glory success to House Von Valancius. A binaric aria begins to flow from the scratched fox attached to the tech priest's chest. Requesting information exchange regarding contractual obligation Logisticar Theta. Pasco and Opticon 22 exchange glances in a short series of binaric signals before bowing their heads in satisfaction. Opticon 22's head bows noticeably lower than Pasco's. I want to make a trade deal. I will take the med kits. The stims. What do these do? User immediately gains plus 4 MP and plus 4 AP. The next turn, their MP and AP are reduced by minus 2. Deflection Gloves. These gloves allow the wearer to parry melee attacks with their ranged weapon using ballistic skill instead of weapon skill. Oh, that's cool. Some machine right sets. And target designator. 
Whenever the wearer hits an enemy with a dead eye shot, it reduces the enemy's deflection by minus one and applies plus one exploit until the end of combat. Stacks up to three times. So this stuff isn't the same as we saw before. Do you miss out on all the items from the previous area? I guess we'd probably end up going back there later. Either way, I think we've got some upgrades for my companions. Deflection Gloves could be worth it on her. That doesn't stack. It's the same enemy. Yeah, let's go with this for right now. All right, let's keep talking to Opticon 22. Access has been granted to the following options. Information exchange, strengthening of diplomatic links, trade deals, donations. What is Logist Logisticar Theta? Under the contractual obligation in question, 34.761 Terran cycles ago, the Explorator Cognizance Fleet received from representatives, authorized units of the Von Blancis dynasty, a volume of high-grade Prometheum equal to the fuel capacity of six Tantalion uh, Void Tankers. Received it, and they didn't pay. Compensate, remunerate, settle accounts. Should I go on, or is that enough synonyms? The stipulated payment reciprocal offering from the Cognizance fleet can be made to Von Valencius assets at the current time, after which the contractual obligation will be fulfilled archived. Confirm your status regarding acceptance of the payment reciprocal offering. You waited 30 years to pay up. Execution of payment reciprocal offering is in accordance with the specifications of the contractual obligation. Allocation of assets from the holdings of the Cognizance fleet was initiated when the tankers reached the main squadron. 14.907, sorry, 905, I don't know where I got 7 from, a Terran cycles after the initial transaction. The asset allocation process concluded 2.663 Terran cycles later. Transportation of assets to the Fear Abundance system took 16.862 Terran cycles. Final delivery of assets to Footfall took 0.331 Terran cycles. Clever. If you've been purchasing fuel for a squadron at the other end of the Imperium, you may never have had to pay at all. It would have turned to dust before you made it there and back. You were saying that my dynasty has had extensive business dealings with you. The statement is true. The Cognizance fleet concluded 1,292 con contractual obligations with the Von Valancis dynasty as represented, led, administered by the counterparty identified as Theodora Von Valancius. The most substantial pact, sorry, was pact 8 Yule in accordance with which Archmagos Cubis Delphum, data usher of the Sevenfold Hollowed Workshop of the Sacred World of Euphrates II, was transferred to the planet Kiava Gamma to perform the duties of a minister as its fabricator censor. The services of such a highly enlightened, enhanced, authorized servant were recompensed via the offering of Paid For With, a seven-year contract granting the fleet's exploration vessels maintenance privileges at the Kiava Gamma facilities. That is true. In the last couple of decades, Lady Theodora took pains to form a strong relationship with the Cognizance fleet. She turned down a dozen candidates looking for the right tech monitor to watch over Kiava Gamma. What payment can I expect? Universal Mobile Orbital Deployment Extractiums, Astra Aridor Processing Complexes, and the quantity stipulated in the contractual obligation. Each unit has undergone a cycle of maintenance liturgies and has been assessed for conformance 
uh, to the Sacred Standard Template Construct, or STC. The Mechanicus love the, loves those things, but they don't find very many. Great creations of the Omnissiah, blessed be his beneficence, which has bestowed upon these complexes industrial might and a full cycle of reproduction and life support. I'm actually going to go with option four. I think this will... Yeah. Gonna give us 5,000 um, reputation with the Explorators. Which isn't why I was going to select it. This deal was made before I took the helm as the Rogue Trader. So there's no reason to take the payment because, well, there is a reason, but... I think it's better to have good relations than get this payment anyway. Uh, no payment is needed. Consider the Prometheum a, my gift and a sign of my hope for collaboration in the future. The request is accepted. A contractual obligation log, logistica, log, son of a gun. Logisticar Theta is concluded. The Cognizance fleet thanks House von Valantius for its cooperation. The status of the unit's requests will be increased. I seek the friendship of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The priesthood of the Adeptus Mechanicus is interested in, considers expeditious cooperation with rogue traders. Under the terms of the Treaty of Mars, it is willing to provide services to the Von Valancius dynasty. The priority of service tasks can be raised if diplomatic links are strengthened. The Connaissance fleet will be glad alternative available to accept 1. Any samples of sacred technology 2. Samples of profane xenotech 3. Miscellaneous items Reminder Storage, study, and or disposal of the aforementioned objects with the exception of 3. Miscellaneous items is the preferential right of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Explorator fleet will also accept information about planets in the Coronis Expanse that have not previously been recorded in the Planetary Register. But why do you want information about planets? Omnifaceted study of the Coronis Expanse is the sacred mission operational objective of the Cognizance fleet. Information about the planets and star systems of the Coronis Expanse must will be compiled, studied, and transferred to the holy repositories of Mars upon completion of the Great March of Exploration mission. This process increases the totality of knowledge and decreases the totality of ignorance in the universe. But why are you interested in Xenotech? Isn't that heresy? The Connaissance fleet finds it reasonable to believe believes that forbidden knowledge in the hands of the Lady causes destruction and violations that go against the Omnissiah's will. Weakness of mind and will unleashes Xeno heresy, which consumes the Lady whole. I think it's laity. An example that demonstrates the outline pattern, a void station in the system of Langren's belt. According to the data available to the Cognizance fleet, Sorry. Uh, according to the data available to the Cognizance fleet, the heretics on the station have traded relations with Xenos for the sake of obtaining dangerous and pernicious technology. The destruction of these heretics is of high, pr high priority, but not high enough to demand immediate action. I have some questions. Information assistance will be provided. Opticon 22. That's a strange name. The designation Opticon is an identifier with an illustrious history, a significant number of archive references, and is used by many explorators and the Cognizance fleet. The extension 22 is a custom edition made by the current unit designed to highlight the unit's unique personality. <laughs> but what is the Cognizance fleet? The Cognizance fleet is an explorator fleet formed produced by the Adeptus Mechanicus for the purpose of surveying optionally conquering the Coronis Expanse. The fleet's core squadron is located in Data Classified, while auxiliary echelons and autonomous void vessels are operating throughout the entirety of the Coronis Expanse. May the Omnissiah's favor be with my tech comrades. Pascal reverently touches the Explorator insignia on his robe. You are an Explorator. Then why are you here instead of exploring faraway systems? This unit functioned as a senior planetary scout, sorry, planetary, not Tory, a scout for the duration of data classified procedural cycles. It was distinguished with 1. Three promotions by one grade, 2. 
the right to a Tier 2 Sacred Augmentation, and 3. A notation in the Fleetwide Archive as a valuable unit. After Reconnaissance mission in the Tynora system, this unit was promoted to the rank of Logis and transferred to Footfall in order to perform the functions appropriate for its current status. There is something close to wistfulness in Opticon 22's otherwise emotionless voice. My archive contains data on the reconnaissance of the Tynora system and the associated special circumstances. I express my respect for a veteran and adherent of the fleet. Valid assessment. The Tynora system was a great test of faith, an assessment of this unit's durability threshold, an act of destructive xenocide. So what happened in the Tynora system? Pascal and Opticon 22 turn to you and snap in unison. Data classified. What are you doing on footfall? This unit performs 1. Residential representation 2. Maintenance of the bureaucratic machines for the purpose of ratification of the insulating boundaries 3. Management of the Kappa Thread supply line 4. Compilation of astrographic reconnaissance data Ablar lets out a long and heavy sigh. There was once a tech acolyte in Lady Theodora's retinue who knew the unique language of the esteemed tech priests. I only began to realize the true value of his abilities after he'd been devoured by a Xeno beast on some nondescript world. Pascal, do these words have a translation? A hiss of static resembling a sigh comes out of Pascal's vox. Opticon 22's functions can be conveyed through flesh speak as functioning as the fleet's diplomatic mission, overseeing shipments, ensuring that the laity does not encroach upon the explorator's sphere of interest, and collecting data on star systems. Uh, why are you here and not, say, at the Legion's Palace? A long communication with lay people of high social standing causes this unit vexation, desire for forceful cessation of vital functions, grief, decline of motivation, righteous fury, willingness to initiate purity protocol. Remaining in an area of repair and maintenance of sacred machines is beneficial to this unit's cognitive functions. I understand. The statement is true. The behavioral dynamics typical of lay groups are frequently devoid of logical patterns and are taxing to analyze. I have no more questions. Information assistance mode deactivated. Us so are up to seven now. Alright, it's 35 profit factor. This is 23. We're only up to seven, so. All right, fair enough. I always keep my options open. Well, I'm gonna call it here. Next time we'll make more progress because we don't have to level up again. That's a lot of reading right there. Plus, we met Opticon Twenty Two. Let's actually loot this body while I'm right here. I always oh, it's not a body this time. <laughs> oh, it's a code to get over there. Okay. We'll deal with that next time, I think. Is there money to be made? Oh, I don't mind. That's a share. Still talking. Also, is my formation messed up? It is. Actually, we'll probably move uh, Pascal up a little closer as well, because he's got the uh, plasma gun this time, instead of the, the last, the long last. Alright, I'm going to call it here, and next time we'll continue exploring Footfall. Got plenty of loot to track down. So for now, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.